Construction, launch and fitting out. Mary and her sisters were big bottomed and difficult and they had to manage without engines. The wolves overstretched and no jaw could drink the drink she gave to them. Queens bought private islands in the sun and larger bosoms for their daughters. She was huge like Bill and Harry and Harry was high and long for floating German sausages. She was VR incarnate and got laid out and grown through test tubes. Boxers, garters, falling over punches to the ribs and spine. They held deep bottomed photographs, big feet to kill the immortals. Mary rolled steel cigarettes and her spinal plates were laid with clinking overlaps, fashionably keeling over in the water. She got laid again and they slipped in and out of armbands, riveted three times over with hydraulics. Inside Mary she had 16 skulls and small intestines stretched above her gullet, painted love on boards to walk along the beaches, gliding wheelbarrows. She wore life on her leggings and carried armbands as she stood on top of everyone. Three made deals and one post for photographs only streamed across the airwaves. Mary worked hard and lived on the edge of 15,000 supernovae, nothing two seatbelts can't cure. They hadn't a hat between them. She had a body to die for and those who did were crushed by dogs, testicles severed by steel shrapnel falling forests. She slid past lords and soap fed whores, their legs unnamed in violation. They pulled her through keyholes, kitted her in claret with tits too big to stick to intellect. She looked like Oceanus, all funneled brows like dimples and British steel skins, bright red windows to the soul. She sang like bruises and hid the winter from the richest parasites to crawl the biggest bounty in the hemisphere, too late to dodge disaster. Sea Trials Mary started on a Monday and got dragged below the borderlands, held back unfairly, derailed by bad breezes and a shrill southwesterly sunbeam. She was Staffordshire and they greased her with bleach and fire, harlots and charlatans being sick in fish buckets. They tested for love, handled key characteristics, later engulfed and driven to slow despair, turned to a sudden stop. She covered knots and broke international agreements, found worthy to plough mud furrows all the way down south. Mary hit the bottle and gave birth to her humanity. Maiden Voyage Mary's movement was enough to cross oceans and she came home with the sisters of Olympia. They all had legs and subscriptions to magazines, exporting Einstein in every direction imaginable. Mary was trained to meet schedules, to break her legs on the slow train to Cherbourg. They docked her in a brand new baby. Crew Mary saved hundreds to wash her hair again, married maids, men and minions, impertinent teens in casual clothing like bells and bones and incense. Mary had eggs and old potatoes, switching hands when her legs were tied together, tingling beside her. She was divided and her teachers drank no semen, real men stoking stewardesses. Mary was in print and her brother took a bullet to the brain again. It started in Southampton where they built stone huts and subordinates, made French music and covered corn with yolk. Passengers she was just a number with a thousand open eyes. She travelled light with big kids larger than all who came before her. She was barely full of fluid and she fit filthy firsts and thirds. She'd be filled with junk and crushed diamonds, claiming refuge in cancelled crosses. They stopped so short she set silver earrings, barely saving grace. She stole from her sister and ran for the Iron Hills. They came like sheep in the wind, millionaires and millionaires' wives, industrialists and fast food conglomerates, lords and ladies, businessmen. They came like socialists like journalists chasing reform and all manner of mutes and morons. Her father wanted peace but she blocked his calls and she told him where to stick it. She forgot the men she slept with and she dodged responsibility. She didn't sell seconds, she clutched straws and mortgaged it all before her. Departure and westbound journey. And just like that, her people came in drones right beneath her bosoms. There were fleas and insects climbing on her shoulders before the great infestation. Big men in strange jackets climbing signposts and the biggest of all waved his hand back, checked for spots and smearing fingers with ink and any blindness. These guys aren't invited to the party. Hundreds left their southern lovers and others joined them for perfection. She started slowly walking and her curves caused broad disruption and she left the island swinging in the Netherlands. Scotty stopped disaster and sent down self-esteem for supper time. Mary swam through static channels, fled to Cherbourg with tender legs and legal specifics, the only star still burning in the sky. They swarmed her like dung beetle holocausts, leaving queens beneath the mud. They launched corks and clouds obscure potato stew. The locals couldn't fit inside her, their rubber stretched but couldn't swell. They decked her curves in lubricant, sensing danger in half-obscure potatoes buried in his briefcase. She unplanted toenails and crawled towards Atlantis. New beginnings, her cold new beginnings. 
She was warned, told tales of robberies and the loss of human life. But she started silent, mildly plodding through the springtime. Sinking. Freddy saw stars dealing cards. He steered them back but she was spiked beneath the waistline, sinking deeply into sleep with dreams of steaming diamonds. Life was a drug she carried and she knew hell happened. They tossed out lives like wounded taxi cabs. Mary sealed deals through Middle Earth with hatchways and propellers to cleave the sky in quarters. She was just another floater but they held her like a flower as cold, cold death surrounded her. Mary cried by fire, but she was dripping wax and all alone in California. She drank the wine of virgin death along the motorway.